Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, Today is another exciting evening, and we're going to be talking about the importance of social connections in aging and dementia. So I just want to start out with a few points. In the UK, which is where we're sat at the moment, there are about more than 2 million people that actually age more than 75 years of age, and these people are classed as aged. And what's really important is that Age UK says that about 1 million people that age over 75 can actually go for about a month without actually meeting anyone at all, which can sound really lonely. Imagine if for a whole month you don't see anyone else but the four walls of your home. That can be a little bit worrying for some people and also can be a little bit confusing. And sometimes when they then go out to meet people, it's really difficult for them to actually interact with other people. But before we talk about the importance of social connection, it's good to understand a few things. A recent study looks at 8,000 people and found out that people that had less contact with people were more likely to actually suffer some brain degeneration, which is really worrying. And recently, in the Journal of Neurology, they found out that older people with very little social connections than others will actually at some point lose their overall brain function. And more importantly, if they already have dementia, then there is actually a risk that their dementia could degenerate. And even if they didn't, then they have a risk of actually getting dementia. I'm going to say something. There is no research that actually directly correlates the onset of dementia with social connection deprivation. So that's really important. But we know that it does have an impact on it. So the other scary part is that 32% of people that have been socially isolated actually have increased risk of death, which is also known as mortality. And I think that's really important when we think about what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to say that, again, we're in this blood, really nice place called Love Day. Now, we're not in Kensington today. We're actually in Abbey Wood, which is the new center for Love Day. And I'm sure everyone's going to say, what's about Love Day, right? It's actually a senior members living club that is based in London. And what's really important about being in this place is that they have a dedicated service, not just for dementia care, but actually the whole act of aging and making sure that people actually age actively. And I think that's some of the light that we're going to talk about today and also cast a bit of light about how being in a place like this actually helps you stay socially connected because there are so many services that actually ensures that people continue to maintain their brain power like we talked about with social connection and more importantly they're interacting with other people and are able to actually function maximally even as they age i'm also now going to be joined by three amazing people and i'm saying this like with the most humble thought because first of all is going to be dr thomas mclaren and i'll tell you a bit about him he's actually a psychiatrist at st thomas's hospital and qualified as a consultant in 2017. What's really important is that he's not just a psychiatrist for the general psychiatry, but actually focuses on old age adult psychiatry. He's also actually done a lot of stuff because I know that you led the Brent Memory Service from 2018 to 2020. And that's very important when we talk about leading a memory service in a country that is constantly aging and with like, new interventions and in medicine people are going to get old and therefore being able to support people as they age is very important he's also a member of the royal college of psychiatrists he's actually been a member for over 10 years now and entered into the specialist register in 2017 that's really important also because if you're based in the uk that means he's actually an expert in the field of what he does and that's really important i think what i really love when i read about you and i'm reading a bit about him from the paper because there was so much you've done that i'm like there's no way i'm going to remember all of this right so I'm going to read a bit also. I think what really made me really excited about having you on this is how you've actually not just developed a clinical network of people, but you've also linked people, dementia specialists across central and northwest London, which is a huge population. And it's so important that when we think about the impact of COVID-19 and the pandemic on our lives as individuals, not just the elderly population, and how much we felt isolated socially, that during this time, you were actually able to actually offer people in-person and remote consultations, which means even though he couldn't, we were all isolated, you were able to support your patients. So I'm going to really be excited to hear from you. I have so much I've written about you, but I can't read out L of yeah, it because no. it's just going to take the whole evening. So thank you so much, Dr. Thomas, for joining thank us you. today. Thanks a lot. Great thank to you. be here. Thank you so much. So join us again. I talked about being in Love Day, Abbey Woods, right, which was different from Kensington, and it's one of the new centers. And as I said, 
once I walk into this place, I feel like I'm at home. And I think I want to be able to like age and live here and love with the whole the social connections. So we have Louise joining us, who is the general manager at Love Day. Again, she's not just the manager. She actually started her um, life, is that what I want to call it? Like your life, your professional life as a nurse, which means she's got the experience. And more importantly, if you know a lot about medicine, there's something called CQC inspection, which basically means she goes to different centers to make sure they're up to standard because we never work with the less than the best, isn't it, right? And she has been able to actually like do this for years. So she's got a lot of world experience. And I'm gonna say something about Louise that I found really interesting when I re read about you. I think the best part about Louise's profile was Louise saying how much she loved welcoming members to this club of Love Day. And I think that's really important because if you if you send your loved one to somewhere that they need to live, having a happy face is someone that actually makes them feel at home is very important. So Louise, I'm really happy that you're going to be here and you're going to share light about how you have to make a lot of difference in people's life. Thanks for joining us Thank today. You. Thank you so much. Now, again, it's not in any other. We've got Mandy Andrews. And I think talking about Mandy is exciting for me because if in the UK, Age UK is like the biggest charity when it comes to aging, keeping people active, supporting the elderly who have really built the nation that I live in today because they've done, this is their hard work. So Mandy is actually very dedicated and passionate about well-being of older people, especially when they face dementia. She has over 20 years experience. I'm stressing the 20 years experience <laughs> working with older people. And what's nice is that when Mandy started her career, she actually started in rehabilitation and domiciliary home care. Again, domiciliary means in their own homes, which is very important to make sure they're safe. And by the time she was doing this career 20 years ago, five years later, Mandy actually led a new innovation on dementia outreach team for Hammersmith and the Fulham Council. Then she designed a much needed support of individuals living with dementia. And I think this is really important when we're thinking about social connections because Mandy has tried to make the communities dementia friendly, which is very, very important. In 2019, M18, sorry, she joined as an advisor for Age UK. And obviously she's been working with dementia groups. She set up things that are known as um, some coffee meetings, I think it's called. Memory Cafe. And literally this is getting people together and showing that people continue to stay socially connected while they age. And more importantly, let's assume for whatever reason, we don't achieve active aging and they end up having dementia, which to be honest, might happen. You have been able to find a system that makes sure that they still feel like they're part of the whole world, right? I think that's really important. So thanks Mandy for being here. And I know you did a lot of work during the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So I want to hear about that also. Oh, thanks, thanks for, for having joining me. Us. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I think I'm going to like just do a recap. Obviously we're talking about social connections in aging and dementia. And for everyone joining us from wherever you are, just remember what the rules are. Please mute your computer because we want everyone to hear us. But more importantly, if you have questions, please share with the team and we're going to try and address your questions. And I think this is a huge opportunity because we've got a panel of people that have the experience, right? And a lot of us as individuals, like my father just turned 89 this year. And I keep, for me, the biggest thing is that I worry what's going to happen in a few years time. And I think, I think having a team of experts that I can reach out to at different points to support me is very important. And I think it's amazing that we have this opportunity to speak to all of you guys today. Thank you once again. And we're going to dig into my questions. <laughs> that makes sense. Cool. I think I'm going to start out with Louise, actually, because mm -hmm. when Love Day, Love Day has been really amazing to us because not only does it support our patients in the concierge company. I never introduced myself, by the way. I'm Chichi, <laughs> right? And I run this concierge company called Anomo Health, which is a premium health concierge. And we have a lot of elderly patients that come to Love Day to stay in Love Day. And I think it's important to, for people watching to understand why we choose Love Day as a place. So would you introduce Love Day to us so we understand why we're in this beautiful place? Yeah, where they look sure. The patients? Um, so Love Day, we are a private members club for seniors. Um, and we have people who live with us full time. Um, and then we also offer respite stays, so shorter stays. And we also have a day club, so people can come and spend the day with us, enjoy a lovely meal, take part in the activities. Um, and then we also have a home care service, so Love Day at Home. So we're able to support our members in their own homes. Um, so we're really able to support people with any, um, any needs, um, any nursing needs, 
we have people living with us who have dementia. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a really great offering because some people aren't always ready to, um, or might not always need to move into a residential setting. Um, so what's great about Love Day is we have lots of different options um, and we can support people throughout their whole journey, um, which is really, really lovely. Thanks, Louise. I think one thing that you said that really, like in that, in that whole thing was like, you talked about how you support people differently. I think for me as a doctor, so I've also experienced the fact that you guys also customize care for patients. Because I remember having a patient that you assessed and they were saying to them, what do you like? What type of Netflix programs do you like, right? And that's the thing about when we talk about social connections, you want to make sure that the patient or the or the member here it's able to actually maintain the life they were used to outside so there's not really a lot of change and they're able to enjoy the same things they used to enjoy with them when they were younger because that way they feel like part of a community they don't feel isolated because when people retire they get old they get a little bit lonely they feel that they're not as important as they used to be and i think that's really important and i think that brings me to tom how does social connection actually impact on them the mental health of an older person, especially if they're living with dementia. Mm. It's like just like you said, Chi Chi. It says it can it can worsen the the course of of them their cognitive decline if, if they already have some memory problems. And and what I've seen is where people may, might have developed dementia already. Um, their their faculties, their their ability to concentrate and process things and re even remember basic things like the names of relatives, recognize relatives and, and their independence, it can reduce more if they're isolated. So it's, it's really, you know, important to have those connections, even if you're, you know, watching this at home, you know, calling up your older relatives, especially if you're worried about them, you know, make time to talk to them and, and keep those contacts, family meetings, taking them to the park, simple things. Um, I know at Love Day they do so much more than the basics, you know, it's like, yeah. a, a, you know, organized trips and, you know, going to the cinema, you know, uh, cinema, cool. electric cinema in London, or people are coming in all the time to visit. So it's that kind of maximum social contact. Uh, people are sometimes worried about having too much, putting too much pressure, but you can't. If someone has um, dementia or memory problem, the more, the better for them. The more contact, the more their brain is. Stimulated. I think that just keeps them normal, isn't it? Yeah. Like keeps them normal. We never talk about too much when we do stuff ourselves. So why should they slow down when they've never slowed down their whole lives? Yeah. And I think actually that brings me to Louise again, right? Because there's something Dr. Tom said, which is really important. A lot of stuff are done in Love Day. And I think it's nice if you could share with us some of the strategies that exist in Love Day that actually helps us implement social connections when it comes to aging and dementia. Yeah, so I think a common question I get asked is what's a typical day in Love a day. Love Day member's <laughs> life? Um, and I always say, well, it depends on the member because it really is focused around each individual. Um, like you were saying, you know, I always think we all wake up every day and we have a purpose. We people need us, you know, you have to get up and look after your kids or come to work. And just because you get older or you are living with dementia, that need for purpose doesn't go away. Um, so we really are very intentional about creating purpose for our members. Um, and we focus on their ambitions and their goals. Again, just because you're older or because you're living with a dementia, none of that stuff goes away. Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot of time finding out those things and then supporting people um, to go about their, their daily lives, as you say, just as they always have um, a you know, needing care isn't the end of the road. Mm -hmm. So it's about finding how we can support them to have the best quality of life. I think that's really impressive because I remember coming to visit, was it Abby? No, I think it was, I can't remember which of the centres I went to. Because obviously you guys have other places that you have Abbey Wood, you have in Notting Hill happening now. Yes. And you used to have in Chelsea Court, I think, yes. right? And I remember coming to one of the centers, I can't remember which one, because they're all so beautiful, I forget <laughs> sometimes. And there was a fashion show. Oh, yeah, and it yeah. was like this beautiful designer had come because people there loved fashion. And I think that's so impressive because everyone thinks, oh, let's forget it. No, 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 maybe they just need to rest. I don't think, I think it's really impressive the work that Love Day does to like keep people like socially engaged. And I've been here once again where there was an opera singer singing. And I was like, wow, that's really fantastic. Because you almost feel like 
you're living your life again you know yeah. you'll be that and i think that's really impressive like amazing work that you do really yeah. amazing so mandy mandy i know age uk like i don't even know how sometimes i feel like the uk elderly population would not exist without age uk because you guys do so much work right from exercises to just supporting people to doing like communities that are really friendly dementia friendly and what i was wondering was like when there's a place like love day are there like measures that EDUK puts in place to collaborate with like nursing homes to improve social engagement and also to support the older people with dementia, for example? Um, I, we don't really do too much at the moment, I think, but I think we are looking to work, really work more together um, because people are in the community before they go into a nursing home. So carrying the things you do in the community into the home that you go into is really important that continuity so yeah i think working together would be a really great thing to do and it's something we've got to look to, more to the future to do we do get people some of your clients who come to a memory cafe mm -hmm. um so we sort of join a little bit that way at the moment mm -hmm. but i think yeah the future is working much more together I was just wondering, what does Memory Cafe do? Because I was quite interested about that. And first of all, I love the name that says Memory Cafe. It just reminds me of like having tea and refreshing my memory. And we do have tea. Exactly. <laughs> and have coffee. A tea and cake. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a once a month event. We do two in Kensington, Chelsea, one in the north of the borough, one in the south of the borough. We're really lucky as we have transport, which is a big deal for people with dementia. Um, is getting to places safely. So we're lucky we do have transport. Um, so people come along um, and we, I try and provide a different activity each month. So something physical like chair yoga um, or something or chair exercise, dance we do. Um, something kind of entertainment wise. We have um, lots of music. We have Holland Park Opera come and visit us. Um, something more educational. We've just had the Science Museum. They come in. So again, we're lucky in Kensington, Chelsea. We've got all these resources, all the museums and the art galleries and they work with us quite a lot so so we'll do an activity we'll have tea and cake we'll chat among ourselves lots of peer support people make new friends they see old friends sometimes um, carers can come along family can come along it's really relaxed and really open I think that's fantastic isn't it because I like the parts where you said we make new friends right because some people obviously like when you think about that one million people will go for like a month and not see anyone yeah. coming to memory clinic must be really refreshing because you're literally meeting new people that your age doing stuff with them and i guess I, people can make friends anytime yeah, i think yeah that makes a lot and of they sense. are very supportive to each other it's really mm -hmm. amazing mm -hmm. how much they support each other and with the memory issues as well they'll talk openly about it as well so. oh, thank you so much so tom i was thinking right as a psychiatrist, obviously, you have a lot of patients that have long term health conditions. And I guess you also see a lot of people who come in because they've had bereavement, they've got caring responsibilities with um, their loved ones. Do you think that actually contributes in any way, like long term conditions and bereavement, to decrease social connection? And if so, how mm. does that impact? Yeah, tr absolutely. I would say that so long term conditions, so things like, um, you know, some older people will have cancer or they might have um, other illnesses that limit their mobility um, you know diabetes or, or other um, you know arthritis and things like that that can really reduce someone's ability to maybe to be mobile to, to get out out of their home to see their family and so on and then there can be a knock-on effect sometimes people can start to develop low mood depression anxiety and you know that can affect anyone even you know you might notice in, in uh, a relative being being less talkative um maybe being lonely as well they might um have a kind of lingering handshake there could be some subtle signs that they're really you know uh wanting to keep you on the phone or something the sign mm -hmm. that they want that mm -hmm. connection and uh you know so this is where the good things absolutely that mandy says those those social connections the cafes that exist and um you know and things that love day too you know the the day uh, service that they have you know I was, just when i was arriving today it was very busy in in the, in the place you know they're just finishing for the day people come and visit and that might be their social 
social connection, like the cat, like a cafe set up mm. without having tea and coffee, and and that's you know very. I think you know, I think it's really great because a lot of people don't actually know that these services exist. Mm. I think that's why doing this is so important because imagine if your loved one is love, lost. Like I have a lot of patients that come to me and they've been married for forty years, fifty years, and then this is like their only social mm. person and then they lose that person they're struggling knowing mm. that it could go somewhere like what HUK is doing with the um with the cafes or what mm. love day does with the day center is really important because then that way they're engaged they're doing stuff that they want to do and it's mm. it's really interesting for them isn't it because what we mm. want is for them to be able to like maintain their brain power mm. doing things i think like everyone talks about how when you're lonely or your idol is like your biggest enemy right so yeah. i think being able to actively engage is so important because you're not like sitting down morning thinking about how life is so difficult and all that bit and i think that's just fantastic about being socially like staying in tune with the world yeah. keeping your brain ex exercising the brain exactly. and sort of challenging yourself a bit you know like like you're saying mandy the trips to museums or something you know people are stimulated and yeah. having to focus maybe a bit of navigation they're doing or they're Definitely. focusing on different exhibits Ooh. and it could be anything like that that's uh that's uh, challenging them and, and helping keep the the, the brain cells, the neurons um, firing. I think what that brings to my mind is like a place like Love Day, right? I know a lot of thoughts has been put into place with the design and the layout, right? Of Love Day, I'm gonna use Love Day as an example because I know it's like not just a nursing home, it's literally like a home away from home, mm -hmm. aging home, right? And I'm just wondering, what do you think is like um, the design and layouts of Love Day and what and I know we've talked about some of the facilities that you have in terms of what you do for social connections, but we didn't love the also let's assume someone doesn't really want to go out right. What's the layout like what are the facilities inside love day that can actually still keep them connected without having to go anywhere. Sure, so I think the space is really interesting for social connection. We have some large communal areas where we can all spend time together, but also we have some kind of smaller rooms and smaller kind of corners of the home where if people find being around too many people overwhelming, they can have smaller interactions, um, you know, maybe sit down next to one other person and look at the newspaper or watch the television together. So I think the space is really usable um, to support members to create these moments because often I find with people living with dementia or people who have previously been at home and maybe have been very lonely it's then quite hard for them to come in and be around lots of people and make friends you know at any age it can be hard to make friends Fantastic. let alone Ooh. when you're older and if you've got some awareness that your cognition isn't what it used to be it can be very daunting so we spend a lot of time matching people so whenever we get a new member we always think oh this person would get on really well with this person and then we'll introduce them maybe set up a lunch or tea and coffee um, and that always works really well just to ease people gently into the environment mm -hmm. um, we do have some people who like to spend more time in their bedrooms mm -hmm. so in those instances we just take everything to them um, so we can do all the activities in their rooms, we can do one to ones, um, so we also have opera um, singers come and they can go to individual oh, bedrooms um, and that kind of then gradually eases people out because when they start enjoying themselves in their comfortable space, they're then more tempted to pop down and see what's going on in the rest of the home. That's really, that's really impressive and interesting, mm. isn't it, right? Because I like the fact that, and that actually gets me thinking that, let's assume um, someone doesn't want to get out of the house. I think also, we never think about social connection in terms of bringing that to them, which is great. And I know that not everyone has a family, right? But the people that have families, and I think that brings me to you, um, Wendy. <laughs> like, you've worked with AGUK for such a long time. You've done all the like community things with AGUK. Do you think there's a role that family plays in enhancing social connections in elderly individuals and also people living with dementia? Oh, definitely. Um, for most people, the family is the most important thing and the thing that's consistent through their life. You, you may lose your friends, elderly people lose their friends, 
friends move away. So your family is what's there. And I think with the younger generations of family as well, that's really important, keeping that younger um, link with younger people, uh, with people with dementia. So yes, they can support, they can support by taking you to activities, support by doing activities at home. We, we recommend to families um, the websites where you can get dementia games and activities to do. And lots of people don't know those websites are there and they just need a bit of inspiration and a, bit, a few ideas to get you started. And you can do all those activities at home without going anywhere. So with your family members. It's interesting, isn't it? I think it's really important, obviously, for people to realize what is available, right? Yeah. And I think doing this is really exciting. And if you're just joining us, we're still talking about social connections and the importance when people are aging and people have dementia. Again, as I said, if you have questions, please just drop us an inbox of questions and we'll try and address it. And we've got really a massive, beautiful experts knowledge of people here right who are talking about these things they've got within them i don't even know how many years experience i can't even count mandy alone is 20 years of experience so that's a room full of experience if that makes sense so i think that's really interesting so tom i was just wondering i know we've talked a lot about social connections how being socially connected is important let's assume for whatever reason someone then lacks social connections mm -hmm. What is the, I know we've talked about dementia and we know that science doesn't really say there's a direct link for impacting it, but what are the other things that it could impact on, especially when it comes to cognitive decline, for example, in the elderly population, in terms of if you're isolated? Mm. And yeah, it can affect a lot of things in terms of general well-being, making people, you know, people who are isolated are more at risk of, of um, you know, developing poorer health, maybe engaging less with their GP, even looking after themselves. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about something um, you guys were saying, Louise was saying about fear too, is people start to, with maybe very early memory trouble, they can't think of the right word or they, they realize they can't recognize the, maybe a certain relative or a friend. They, they start to avoid situations sometimes. Yes, so yeah. that could be something really important to look out for maybe early on. And uh, you know, in your in your loved ones and your relatives and friends who might be having s some memory trouble, and it's it's okay to talk to them about it and try because it might be the a relief for them. They might feel they can't really tell anyone and and they're they're worried. And and I was thinking about these people you were both talking about preferring time in their rooms, and it sounds like a really healthy thing to be able to have board games, isn't it? To and contact, taking things, connectedness to people. Because um, you're right, Chichi, it's a, it's a risk of, of um, being isolated for general physical health decline and mental health too. They're so strongly linked. So it's, yeah. I think like, no matter what we all do, I think the COVID-19 showed us how much being isolated is like the worst thing ever. Like, I don't know about everyone else. Like, it was scary. You couldn't see family members. You just see those four walls constantly. It's really difficult, isn't it? I think it was quite a difficult time mm. to be able to like, you know, cope mm. really. So I think that, thank you so much. So that brings me to something else, right? So let's assume that we've tried all of this, right? And maybe people don't have access to it. And we know that obviously we're in the digital age where everything is like, sometimes I'm like, I can't even leave the house without my phone, without my computer. I can't even remember the last time I could do that, right? I don't even recall anymore when we had no mobile phones mm. and no computers. It's <laughs> yeah. like, wow, there's no life without yeah. it right now. So I was just wondering, right, Louise, like for a place I love the, are there things that you guys have integrated to make sure that technology is here? It is like technological advancement to be able to ensure that patients are socially or, or members are socially connected to other adults and how you tailor those technology inputs to their individual needs. Yeah, so I think um, COVID obviously started everyone <laughs> doing FaceTimes and Zooms, um, and that has carried on um, at Love Day for some of our members, especially for members' families who live quite far away. So that does work really well. Members have almost weekly catch-ups with their families on Zoom um, or FaceTime. And it's, it's nice even, you know, sometimes some of our members who are living with quite advanced dementia, they might not really be able to have a conversation necessarily, but even just seeing their loved one mm. and hearing their voice can be um, really, really beneficial. Mm. 
So we, we do that. Um, some of our members will also, um, they have laptops and computers and they'll use those as well. Um, I had one lady the other day who um, she's not able to speak and I was doing some work in one of the communal areas and she came and sat next to me. And I just thought, I wonder if she can still type. So I said one of her daughter's names and I said, oh, how do we spell it? And then she did it on the keyboard and she oh, typed wow. it. Yeah. So it's kind of using technology to find different ways to connect with people. Um, so yeah, I, would I say think that. that's really, that's really nice. I think like FaceTime is something that a lot of us never think about that it actually lights up someone's day. And I think like for me, Mandy, I thought like, so we like if they loved it and someone can help them use FaceTime, someone help, can help them use like typing, using a computer. But for people in the communities, are there things like EDUK, for example, the UK government or just people generally put in place to make sure that technology can be leveraged also for social connections? Um, we've got a new team actually just recently and it is a digital inclusion team so we've got this team go to people's houses they do group classes as well but they also go to people's houses they'll lend them ipads and lend them phones and alexas we're using alexa now oh, nice. a little bit um That's and so we're trying to get the older generation a little bit more digitally literate is that the right word these days yeah, yes um, yeah. <laughs> um so that team they've got lots of people they're, they're really doing really well and i kind of cross over in that little bit with i've got clients who need um prompts for certain things so they're going to lend me their alexa we can lend it to the person we can either either program it ourselves or family member or help them and then they can work with that for a little while if they like it they can buy one themselves or if they don't like it it's we've tried something but um alexa's proving quite popular i think at the moment that's really like i didn't know that was even happening in the comments yeah, i think, I think that's really could, impressive yeah it's a fun thing it can be used for music it's not just when people think digital sometimes it's all oh, ipad and it's oh, but you show them that it's it's uh, music and it's films and information they get quite into that that's interesting isn't it that's, i think that's really good like being able to because i think a lot of like i think like a while ago, I remember when they were going to get rid of the yellow pages, right? And I'm going to say that because I even panicked, even though I went to find the yellow ones. And I kept saying, what will the old people do? How are they going to get stuff done? So it's really impressive to know that you put in place things to support them to be able to do stuff with technology. And I think recently I went to a bank on a Saturday and they had all these appointments with like all the people. And I was really impressed about the banks creating time to help them with their accounts because I struggle sometimes with online banking mm. and I can imagine how difficult it is for them. And I think if HUK is doing things about making people like technology savvy, that's really impressive because that way people feel like they're connected to today's world. And more importantly, they're able to still live their life normally because yeah. technology is so advanced. And sometimes I'm like, are we even going to catch up? Right? It's just so fast. Mm, now there's AI, there's stuff that write letters for you. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> where are we going to with this, right? So I think Tom, right, I know we've talked a lot about social connections and different things. And I think, again, sometimes people don't have families, right? And people are just on their own. Is there things like as health workers that we should be looking out for as signs that patients are actually socially not connecting and therefore they're going to have some form of isolation that will impact on their cognitive function? And how can we as health workers also intervene? Because mm. it's all about multidisciplinary care, isn't it? It's not just mm. about what Louise is doing or what Mandy's doing as health workers. And so we need to be saying, should we be asking for Mandy's services? Should we be recommending Love Day, for example, for the patients? Exactly. I mean, this, yeah, it's a good, it's a really important thing to, for us to think about, isn't it? Because sometimes it's hard to know how isolated someone might be. If we don't know them so well, we might be meeting them for the first time. And this is where um, seeing someone's home environment can be really helpful, visiting them at home seeing what they're like, seeing their usual routine, what's in the fridge, are they getting their shopping done? Um, I was a one, one colleague would always ask if they got offered a cup of tea or coffee, they'd say yes to see yeah. if did they make it right, you know, because they yeah. sequence it, because it's quite, it can be a bit of a complicated task. And um, I've got to, I've got to sing the praises of Love Day again, because I um, have been to a number of patients' homes where the home service, Love Day at Home, have helped and you know, put in a, a specific carer, and that, you know, there's it's great because 
if you know someone's home environment, I think there's, there's a much better chance of keeping them independent the longer you can keep them in that home setting to start with. And so it's, mm -hmm. it's really good in terms of prevention even to find out what's going on with that person and how can I maintain, or how can we as health workers, like you say, maintain, maintain their, memory their memory by delivering that home kind of home care. So it's, yeah. I think that's really great actually. Like, I know like, like obviously we can't stop singing praises about love day and it's not about love day, it's about social connections, right? But I think it's really great how much work you've actually done as an organization to make sure that there's normality for patients. Like I, I remember the first time I walked into a love day building was, in Kensington and I had been to so many different nursing homes right and first of all you walk in and the refreshing air in love days super amazing I think that actually makes you feel welcome and I think what's important is that you guys do like a lot of like gardening for people that love to garden mm -hmm. painting there's someone that reads you a book yeah it's interesting isn't it and I think um that brings me to like a question for you Louise right is I know you've integrated technology into it and you've also done other stuff to ensure that people continue to be connected are there like activities that you organize specially for i know you talk about personalizing things but are there like activities that you organize especially for individuals right that sometimes are not part of the service that you provide but you're doing that because that person has that unique need or something does that make sense? Yeah. yeah um, so we basically obviously have our activities schedule, um, but then we very much look to intertwine kind of day to day things for people, because for us, you know, we don't have, well, some people might, but normally you don't have a, I'm going to bingo on a Monday, I'm going to badminton on a Tuesday, yeah. you know, you just kind of do things you enjoy. Um, some people I've heard enjoy ironing and that's something they would do, not me personally, but they get enjoyment out of putting their favourite movie on and doing the ironing. So we try and support our members to um, find enjoyment and purpose in everyday things. So we have one lady who uh, used to run hotels mm -hmm. and she absolutely loves getting involved in polishing the cutlery, setting the tables, clearing away cups. She obviously doesn't have to do that. Um, because there's someone supposed to yeah. do that. <laughs> um, but she really loves that. And she'll often walk around with me and we'll check in on the staff, see how everyone's getting on, check that the um, bedrooms are all lovely and tidy. And that really gives her a sense of purpose. So we try and find kind of individual things for people um, and then we will plan activities around people's likes um, and passions so before someone moves into love day we complete a lifestyle assessment so that's about finding out all the really kind of personal details about people um, so how they celebrate christmas family traditions um, favorite foods, you know, all those little things that we all, all those quirks that we all have about ourselves, we try to find them out. So then we can tailor their care around all of that knowledge. I think that's interesting because what you're looking at is not just the, the general stuff, but you're also looking at that individual, their culture is what makes them them, right? And I think that's really good. And I, I liked that example because you're letting her leave what she loves doing right and even though she's there's someone doing it for her she's still able to contribute to it and i think that's interesting because the uk is so diverse with so many different cultures right and i guess not one size fits everyone and i think that brings me to you mandy are there some cultural challenges that you actually experience right when you're trying to integrate services to help people stay socially connected in the community um, I think there are, but I think, as you said, London is so diverse and people are very open about their cultures. And so what we find in Memory Cafe or in groups is people will ask people, do they like things this way or do they like things that way? What's mm. important to you? Um, also, I think not with culture, it's just, there's not just one way of doing things. There is diversity within a culture as well. So you do have, have to ask the individual um, what their likes and preferences and how they want things doing. You can't just assume, oh, this is what this culture is. And that's that. It is all about the person again and the individual. So you would ask them their likes and preferences. I think really. I take it from, and I think that's good about like even for the people just joining, it's good to think about when your loved ones 
are aging? What are the things that they like? How do I keep them engaged with what they love? And if they're experiencing dementia, how do I make sure that I keep their memories alive? It could just be keeping pictures that reminds them of things, that their favorite movie, making sure they go out for sports because they love sports. This is, I don't think it's worth saying, oh, let's do something new now. Like It's like, let's keep them doing what they love to do and actually leave them to be independent, even though they're not completely independent. And I think I'm happy we talked about like the cafe and things we do, the day center. And I think that also brings us to like, what other therapies actually exist, right? Within the medical profession. I think one thing that came to me was about pet therapy. Mm. And I thought you'd tell me a little bit about pet therapy. Oh uh, yeah, we were talking, yeah, because I was on the <laughs> shelf, we were even noticing a, 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 like a robot the cat. Or, you know, so so uh, yeah, so about pet therapy. Um, that that can be helpful definitely so in hospital settings we've got um there's a there's a robot seal of like a dementia seal they call it like a so there's that kind of uh, there's kind of therapeutic options that you might have in a in a care home like love day but also for people at home that if just having a a dog or a cat can be a you know or, or other animals that, that you know that can be a source of something to focus your day, provide structure, you know, you have to look after the, the animal, you have to, uh, you know, feed them and, and you know, so it's, a, it's, it's a, that's another form of, of cog we talk about cognitive stimulation. And maybe on the flip side too, it's important to look out for maybe a loved one who's lost their pet because that could be maybe mm. the one little, and there's the cat, the cat's here as well. Yes, that's the cat, I was going <laughs> to bring the, the cat in, because that's actually in love day. Yeah, so this is supposed to be your pet cat, Is it a robot cat? Honestly, yeah. it's so yeah. nice, isn't it? Walking in and seeing the cats because yeah. that works. I want to keep you here. But not that everyone so, needs one, but it's you know, it's, it's things that, that that might help you know provide some some uh, extra kind of uh, loving support, and it's nurturing too. They're looking after you know your loved one might be looking after this this animal, and and yeah, I was just talking about if they've lost their their, their cherished their cat or dog, that could be an, maybe an important time to just check in on them, check that they're mm. okay. Because, um, because, like you're saying about finding uh, people who might be isolated, sometimes that could be a real yeah, risk course. time, to, mm. uh, adjustment period. Mm. But yeah, definitely, it's it's worth thinking about pet therapy for lots of conditions. So not just memory trouble, but people with low moods. A lot of older people will have it. It's hard to tell sometimes if they're having beginning to have memory problems, and yeah. they might have low mood, slowing down their thinking, um, trouble sleeping reduced appetite and some of these early signs of, of depression even can look very much like uh, early signs of dementia. So, so it's, uh, you know, it could be a good time to, to, to introduce them to a new animal. It could, don't worry about challenging people at this time. Exactly. I, I'd say. Um, I'm sure you guys have got the experience <laughs> of it, you know, seeing older people right with their animals. animals yeah. I think everyone says like the dog is your best friend. Right, I, used, yeah. I used to have a best friend that was a dog when I was a child. Yeah. So I understand when people mm. connect with things like this. So it's quite interesting. And I think something else that we've talked about, I know we've talked about pet therapy, Tom, but we also talked about music, like Love Day is really big on music. Yeah. What is the impact of music therapy? Because everyone talks about music therapy with memory and cognition. Yeah. And I know, right, I know Love Day has, has music uh, therapy and it's definitely, that's worth worth looking into. And I've seen um, videos of older people with even severe dementia, like Louise was talking about, some very severe dementia, maybe they can't communicate so well anymore and they're listening to music and they just, it's their kind of music that they knew about when they were younger and it's, they just come to life. So that's a kind of, uh, and Mandy as well, you've probably seen oh, you do this, yeah. don't you? you probably take this. Well, we've, I've had clients who are non-verbal and then we sing and they sing the words of the song. It's just, it's, amazing, it's just like amazing. It? <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. But singing, isn't singing, it's also been medically proven with your brain yeah. as well. Yes, to help. That singing does something to the yeah. brain singing groups um for all kinds of mental health conditions not just not just memory problems memory, even yeah. across the spectrum people with eating disorders and people with maybe severe depression psychotic illness and can be helped by a group and it's a social activity isn't it you're coming together in a choir and and um like you're talking about the opera singers visiting um yeah. here yeah. and and it's people, amazing even yeah. for me it was so therapeutic on the day and i've seen it so many times yeah and i think as individuals also if you're doing activities that you love that your loved ones love and we your loved ones it's also like social connections for us as adults yes. also yes doing things and you're giving back to someone who's looked after you i think it's very yeah. impressive to have to do that isn't it yeah 
So I think that I'm going to take a break from all our questions and I'm actually going to take some questions from people that have been watching because and thanks for joining and your questions are so important so we're going to go through them and they're different questions so one is okay this is for you Louise. so someone says we run a dementia day center offering care activities and entertainment for people living with dementia while giving their carers and family respite how does love they reach and encourage people who will benefit from their services so that they seek support also, how do you encourage people with early stages of dementia to seek help? I think the early stages I'm going to ask Tom about, but the first bit should be for you. Yeah, yeah so um, we have the club offering. So we encourage people to sign up to be a member for Love Day. Um, and because we, uh, we're very much like a private members club, and we try not to use words like nursing home and care and stuff like that. So we try to take away the barriers to accessing care. Mm. So we have one lady who um, she comes to Love Day Kensington four times a week. Um, and she will literally say, oh, I'm coming to the club today. She doesn't know it's a nursing home and she just feels like she's part of a community, which she absolutely is. Um, but that barrier of all oh, dementia being poorly, we try and take that all away. So it makes it easier for people to kind of get involved and subscribe to that. Um, and then also when we engage with any new or potentially new uh, members, we would go around and visit them at home. Um, we call it an assessment because um, we have to assess people before we start providing care for them. But for the member, it's just a really friendly chat. We just go around and have a cup of tea. We don't kind of, I don't introduce myself as a nurse or as a mm. manager. You know, it's just um, that you meet people at their level. Mm. So, you know, we can be friends of a daughter, for example. Exactly. So we really remove anything that's going to make people uh, retract and feel anxious. And, and that works really well for us. I think that's really important because there's a lot of like social stigma with mm -hmm. the word like dementia, even people struggle to see their aging, right? And I think that's really important when you walk in, like I said to you, the first time I walked in, I'm like, this can't be a uh, town. It's like just being away from home. And it's really nice how being able to get people what they want. Like I remember speaking to, I think it was Edie, they said to me, some people can decide that they want more than one room. So they create their own home in the home. Does that make sense? And it's like, you're back to your own home. And I think that's very impressive yeah. to be honest. And I, I'm, I'm happy, like the work you guys do is amazing. Like I can talk about it the whole day. I think it's really great that you're able to offer this service to people. And I love the fact that you call it a club because it is a club. It's a private members club. Mm -hmm. That's the truth, right? Yeah. And if people have worked hard, they deserve to age gracefully in a nice place with this or in the support of a nice place mm -hmm. that can come to their own home. So thanks for the work you Thank do. you. So um, Tom, I was just wondering, so the next part of the question was, um, how do we encourage people with early stages of dementia to seek help? I think that's a medical question. Yeah. Um, so I would say um, it, that can be difficult. Yeah. And it touches on things like stigma and fear that we were talking about before, people might be worried and might be reluctant to start um, talking about these things. And um, that, I mean, speaking to, telling people about, you know, if you're someone watching with, with a memory problem, it's okay to talk to people about it and, you know, share it with people you know, your friends, family, uh, people in your, let's say your GP surgery and so on. And um, that can be a really good way to just start to sound them out because often the commonest, um, type of dementia is Alzheimer's, about two thirds of people have Alzheimer's mm. dementia. And this is where you get a very, very gradual loss of memory, short term mm, memory, yeah. so gradual that it's really hard to even notice. So if there's something you've spotted, the, your loved one might be that, you know, a friend or someone that you know, might be able to help say, oh yeah, I did notice maybe you're struggling to find a word or remember a name or the name of something, or you stopped and you've stopped, or I've had to repeat a few things to you, mm. some of these early signs. And, um, you know, um, I think this is where things like you're saying the club, uh, the, the lovely, you know, the, the private members club mentality is, is so unique here 
to have that is because it's that maybe that barrier isn't there so people already yeah but people like, plan, yeah. I'm just going to a club it's yeah. like going to so, a yeah. golf club or something exactly. right? so it's different yeah. yeah I've done I've visited here and you know and you can just start to talk to people about um their memory and actually they it's much more comfortable and they don't feel judged or victimized exactly and... they just feel like they're living like in it's just going out for like I don't know tea, whatever. Yeah. And they're having fun. It's just like what you guys do with the yeah the cafes yeah. also. Yeah. You're just yeah. going out to have tea with yeah. a bunch of friends. True. I think so the words nice. have a, a lot to do with it. Dementia straight away. I think it alienates people. Exactly. I think talking about memory, you can have memory problems when you're young. Mm. You know, you forget your car keys, these keys all the time. So yeah. talking about memory, I think is better than dementia. Yeah. Yeah. The word. Mm. So Manny, there's yeah. a question for you, and I think it's interesting because we're talking about this. Early someone says could you please share some activity websites plus you have some books i think uh -huh. a little better <laughs> than that um, so I, that's a really nice one because I know you brought some books that you wanted to share with the audience. Yeah, um, of course, the Alzheimer's Society, they've really got a good site with lots of activities on it um, and, and lots of ideas. And they have actually a really big booklet um, that you can either download off the computer or you can actually um, just ring them up and ask them for all these books. And they're really handy, the Alzheimer's Society books. And there is an activity one. Um, there's also there's books like this, like big activity books and these if you type in if you google activity for dementia there's so much stuff now um i was looking at um instagram before i came as well there's so much stuff on instagram it seems to be the biggest social um media platform for dementia so bigger than youtube or all the others so um i'd go to instagram definitely so what do you want them to do like do a hash Dementia. dementia activity yeah and it is all online um but yeah you can get books in bookshops now with it they're just really common really um there's books there's something called mcst now or cst cognitive stimulation therapy and they've developed a maintenance cognitive stimulation therapy now there's a more of a long-term um, stimulation therapy and they have booklets um which you can get and there's lots of um there's lots of ideas well it's very structured activity really structured activity yeah. um so yeah there's online there's lots and lots uh, thanks for bringing the books actually that's really helpful <laughs> and obviously as she says instagram's your friend to go to mm -hmm. hashtag dementia care yeah alzheimer's society alzheimer's society and obviously there's also eduk that you can look at I um, love these also got it's on Instagram and mm. you work closely with Recognition Health also. Yeah. So Recognition Health is also there to look at stuff. And I yeah. think like there's so much out there to help you. But I think it's also important that you go to places where they know what they're speaking about. So things like looking at AGK. But you know, also ask, ask the person. Persons, yeah. the, it's what they want to do really not want us to impose things onto okay. you it's what do you want to do sometimes you just need a bit of inspiration but um but really a bit a good old chat about things you like really can throw up lots of ideas and i think what's also important like from a medical point of view is to always remember that the gp is always a good the go-to person to go to and i know sometimes it's difficult to get appointments for things like that can also help and obviously nhs england has a lot of stuff on aging dementia that we can get information from and as i think that's and again just email some one of us here to say oh like i need some information and, we'll and i don't you. think activity for people with dementia is any different than activity for older everybody people. else yeah so that's a good one i like that because i think we need to stop thinking of dementia as a disease or a condition yeah. for just a process in the aging process, it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's all about active aging and doing it right. Yeah. yeah? Yes. We call it the stages of aging. I think that's what we're calling yeah. it. Yeah, it makes sense. So Tom, there's a question for you that says, what other strategies would you suggest for residents with dementia in order to maintain their social connections, apart from what we talked about already? Mm -hmm. Like uh, residents, like in um so so um keeping up let me think so first of all don't avoid um social you know engagements if you know don't cut people off or feel that you can't uh you know keep up your regular patterns of of going to whatever it is parties or or um uh work meetings with old colleagues or reunions or so on 
and maybe don't you know because other people's memories will have changed too if you haven't seen them for a long time um so try yes you've got to avoid being avoidant and you know exactly, keep involved yeah, yeah. um and then other strategies for i want to bring it back as well to the memory cafes because we were talking about that there wherever anyone's watching around the the uk or or, or abroad, further yeah. abroad yeah. um that they, they'll probably have something like this memory cafes yeah. that those are really good social uh, connections with other people who might be having some memory trouble or or facing some isolation and it's a way of getting involved in other groups like cognitive stimulation therapy that's a very good technique mm -hmm. very strong that mandy just mentioned there's a very strong evidence based uh, based uh, for uh, cognitive stimulation therapy so there's books and um it's that's proven to help protect memory in the longer term mm -hmm. and you know have people's uh, with memory problems even dementia okay. to, will will do better to be involved in those groups and lots of them are free you know it's free to go to these yeah. things and it's the only well, therapy yeah, in the uk yes in the uk sorry <laughs> yeah in the uk yeah it's oh. the only therapy that's non medical yeah. uh, that's recommended by nice so mm -hmm. tell me, like, I know we didn't talk about the stimulation therapy. What does it involve just before? Because we're running out of time. I thought we would just cast an eye yeah. so people know what oh it involves. Oh, um, cognitive stimulation therapy is 12 sessions usually, and they're very structured and they're very, um, you orientate people to the time and the place and you kind of come together as a group. And then each different session has a theme and you, it's very, you stick to that theme and you stick to it in order. Maintenance is the same, but it's more than 12 weeks. Um, at Age UK now, we've just got funding for another year. So hopefully it'll be a year of once a week um, um, groups um, attended by the same people um, who come together and stick together as a group. Um, and yeah, it's you do see results. <laughs> um, it's quite hard to measure, but we're in the process of trying to create a measure for it um and um but, but you can you can see results it's really what good. activities do they do um they'll do a current affairs session okay. so um they'll talk about news or the newspapers or, or a theme within that um you'll do an art session so you're doing some kind of art um so you'll um the one the other week they were looking at paintings and discussing various different styles of painting so really keeping people informed about what's going on really yeah. even memory that's amazing yeah. music yeah. sessions mm. um mm. Uh, cre different creative sessions they're mm. they're very focused and they're um mm. and you really stick to that activity mm. thank you so i think we're almost towards the end but i was just, just do one last word for everyone right so louise i was thinking are there some tips you can give to like nursing staff or families about how to make sure or caregivers about how to make sure they keep social connections with their elderly ones um yeah so i think social connection works both ways so we always really encourage our teams to bring themselves to work um, obviously always remaining professional but it's okay to talk about things you enjoy and where you've been on holiday or your wedding day, um, because that all prompts memories. And then that helps conversation because it can be very difficult when, and for people looking after their loved ones at home, when you're looking after the same people all the time, it's quite hard to continually regenerate conversation. Um, so it's about kind of finding common grounds between yourselves um, and for the families also to be aware that their loved one's interests might change. So we've had people um, who uh, their wives has, have said to us, oh, my husband would never take part in art class. That's his worst nightmare. <laughs> and then as his dementia might progress, we then find actually he really enjoys coloring or doing mm. art and that's okay. So it's just being aware that people's characters and interests can change and just go with it because if that's making them happy in that moment then that's really what it's all about thank you and Mandy I was just wondering are there like initiatives that AGK puts in place to be able to um, collaborate with like local businesses or collaborate with like individuals to make sure we have a dementia friendly community 
Um, well, there's the Dementia Action Alliance, which Love Day um, attend as well. Um, and that is an initiative from the Alzheimer's Society to create a, a dementia-friendly uh, borough. So it's businesses and, and things like that. So we kind of do things like going to talk. We went to the fire brigade and we talked to the fire brigade about dementia in between call outs um, and we've spoken to businesses we work we with lots of the museums and galleries and those kind of things we work with a lot um, um, just doing groups and outreach work as well anyway um, but there's a dementia action week where we try the action alliance and and various businesses will get involved and try and do things to educate the general public who might not know anything about dementia um, so it's those kind of there's a, the, there's a world at alzheimer's day as well so all those sorts of things we try and mark with kind of getting out there and we do, um, we'll go to the market, Portobello Market. We've had the stalls there mm. now and again, and we give out, you know, information and try and reach the public that way, really. Thank you so much. And Tom, I'm just wondering whether there's um, current research going on from a medical point of view, especially with the work you guys do, because I know you do a lot of work in recognition health with dementia, and you guys have also been very instrumental with the new medication mm. that is the magic drug. Congratulations yes. with that, because it's been everywhere. Like have literally it's always popping in and out everywhere on LinkedIn, on the internet. Yes. So that's really great work that Recognition Health is doing. Congratulations. Is there any research going on with um dementia and social connections at the moment? Or maybe in the future, who there, knows? There will be. And it's it's a you know, there's so much research going on with dementia. That's the thing. So I think people people uh, watching at home should feel a ho sense of hope, okay? Because the you know, there are new uh, treatments coming out all the time. There's about nine at least ninety uh, therapies in in uh, stage of trials where they're quite large trials and mm -hmm. recognition like you say it's a major player and um you know some of these treatments are, are showing some real benefit so you know and they're open to, to to people very widely so it's worth getting in touch and definitely the, there's research in in areas of social connection and even you know research that's already shown the benefits of, of things that we've spoken about things like um art therapy, music therapy, uh, pet therapy, uh, and, um, you know, and the, and this cognitive stimulation. So wherever, wherever people are watching, whatever country that they're, they're, you know, I've, I've done research for people from Nigeria, for example, and there's they and have, people from Nigeria watching yes, and Ghana. Exactly. I've seen a number of people from there and then, and, and I then doing the research, I find there's a, there's a kind of subsidiary or affiliated groups affiliated with Alzheimer's UK mm. that, that have they've helped um, spurn their own um, memory cafes or their own work on on uh, dementia groups and and dementia action alliance type organizations. So there's a lot of there is a lot of interest, a lot of research in that area too. So I'd watch this space definitely, not just medication. Yes, it's also the the social, social connectedness that can really be a, a treatment, a powerful mm. therapy for, for memory problems. Honestly, I cannot thank you guys enough. And I think it's so nice that we've been able to co congregate today here and really talk about mm -hmm. something that is so important because dementia is like a big deal in the world, right? Because a lot of people are struggling, like families, the individuals, and more importantly, the society is struggling, not really sure what to do. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really difficult when you're like, I don't want to use the word normal because I'm not calling it abnormality or like you're literally losing control mm. and that's really difficult with anything like with any condition mm. I don't want to call it a condition either because it's not really a condition it's just mm. a process right mm. and I think it's really important that the recognition health is doing a lot of work the work you do in love days like amazing trying to keep people together and trying to get them to be happy as they age and even if they're struggling with dementia they're still able to be active and actually have a meaningful life and age uk come on the work <laughs> you guys do as a charity is like out of this world yeah. trying to constantly make sure that the communities are dementia friendly people understand what's going on people are actually able to cope and i think that's really important that you guys have taken time out of like your extremely busy thursday evening yeah. to have a chat with me about this and i think the whole idea why we do this is actually so like people understand that you're not on your own there are people out there that will always support you and more importantly you're hearing it from the experts so you're not just 
hearing it from just anyone that has little information. I think even the cat, the pet, is here to say hello to everyone. Yeah. So I want to thank you all again, thank like for you. thank you the amazing work. And as I said, I love to be in Love Day every time. So I want to thank the Love Day team, everyone also, the Animal Health team. You guys are great. Like always being here, trying to support us. Love Day is like amazing. If I tell you guys the number of people behind the scene <laughs> trying to make everything work, you would not believe it. And it's like a lot of hard work. And thank you everyone for like being here today. And like, again, the people that are logging from everywhere, the people from London, I don't know, there's Nigeria, there's Ghana, there are people from the US. I'm not sure what countries are in today, but even if I didn't call your country, Thanks for joining and constantly supporting this course. The whole idea is that we want to be able to make everywhere friendly for everyone on Earth. That's what we're trying to do. And make sure people are like constantly socially connected, like we're doing right now, connecting, meeting each other mm -hmm. and just having a conversation. So thanks everyone and have a good evening from London. And if you're not somewhere where it's the evening, have a good night, maybe <laughs> good morning. I don't know whether there's anywhere in the morning or the moment. And we hope to see you again. Thanks once again. Bye. Thanks, Chi Thank Chi. You. Well. Bye. 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 Bye.